Okay, everyone, so welcome to our second lecture for this term. So this is module two lecture titled Communication and Globalization. So we are going to jump right off our topic uh, and see how communication and globalization are two concepts or two phenomena that are really inextricably linked to each other and are inseparable, especially due to the advent of technology in the 21st century. So first of all, let us characterize what globalization is. Okay? So here we see that globalization is firstly interconnectedness so even for example when you have someone to talk to at the other side of the world you can by all means talk to them this is because there are lots of communication channels nowadays powered by technology that we could actually uh, do what used to be impossible way back right so we are not limited by geographical distance we're not limited by restrictions or like physical restrictions we're not actually bounded by space and time because now we can be connected um, to one person to one organization to one institution and even to one nation okay in the international community so we see that interconnectedness means that we are joined we are related to we are linked um, within the world that we're moving in even when we just stay at home for example okay so we have this sense of being connected one way or the other like professionally commercially um personally right we build relationships we nurture these relationships and these interconnectedness allows us to actually access information and actually brings us to the information highway and this allows you know, sharing of culture, resharing of culture, you know, um, being able to understand different perspectives from different nations, from different settings, and allows us to uh, move even when we're not moving at all. So I hope you're getting what I mean. Secondly, globalization is interdependency. What do we mean by this? We see that in the globalized community, we are very much intertwined in terms of our economies. And our economies are very interdependent, you know, with each other. And this is primarily due to uh, international trade and, you know, capitalism this is powered by the technological advancement that we have nowadays so importation exportation is a feature of globalization so we see how the flow of information the flow of businesses and the flow of capital or goods or whatever you have like virtually everything are moving from your community to the international community and from the international community back to your own community so this is all because of the interdependency that's going on made possible by globalization right so let us proceed to a simple or a very brief history of globalization and communication okay in the 1930s uh there was the telegraph okay and the telegraph was an electric communication via transatlantic underwater cable so if you will imagine like how bloody it was back then right so uh, the telegraph was like the first siguro the very first um technological advancement that they had back in the 1830s so come 1840 we had washington and baltimore connected in the night in the 1865 britain and india connected 1870s europe linked to the larger parts of the world and 1924 king george v sent a message to himself that actually circulated the globe in 80 seconds so way back then it was actually something that is amazing already and we would never have and they would have never imagined something like like the cell phones nowadays something like the hologram nowadays right all right so in, during the 19th century there was the emergence of global news networks already so this uh, this was made possible by satellites and other technologies of that effect okay and there were three things that happened okay there were already news over large territories because news uh, had to be disseminated manually and traditionally now news was disseminated over large territories at once due to these global news networks and of course the news were global in scope rather than local 
and then it reached obviously big audience due to um, these things right and then we've got electromagnetic waves and uh, there was the emergence of organizations with the mission to disseminate radio frequencies so this was the birth of the radios okay which used frequencies uh, through air um, so when they're on air they could actually be they could reach more people and they could actually disseminate more information to larger audiences all around the, the locality and all around the globe now let's see what we have now okay we've got all the gadgets that we need we've got laptops or desktops we've got phones mobile phones we've got wi-fi we've got everything okay that could help us touch the world <laughs> yeah so we've got all these things nowadays that make communication and globalization more possible and even more sophisticated and even more progressive now what are the dimensions of globalization we are affected by globalization and the different dimensions of our lives and these effects are really huge okay so let's take a look at each of these dimensions okay so we've got cultural so cultural um, uh, dimensions uh, when we talk about cultural dimensions of course this is about world culture how one culture is being transferred or shared from one part of the globe to another part of the globe take a look at k-pop for example um, k-pop is very popular in the world and especially among among Filipinos right there are lots of k-pop fans around you know the world and the Philippines so uh this is what forms global images you know we've got global audiences already and we've got value spreading right from one point to another point all right and then we've got neo imperialism as well and media imperialism so um about culture we see, we see how media actually becomes the prime mover of sharing and resharing of cult culture shaping and reshaping of culture what media says for example would dictate a big part of what the culture is to us so for example if media says what's beautiful is white okay we say that okay so black is ugly right and because there's a lot of media that says that instills to us that okay you've got to uh, use this whitening product you've got to use this um, slimming product it actually kind of dictates to our psyche that that culturally what is beautiful is skinny what is beautiful is white when we are subconsciously consuming that idea of culture Okay, through media so again it's not at all good okay globalization has also bad effects to us and, it, and as consumers of globalization we have to culturally distinguish what we have to uh, assess and evaluate in terms of our values our spreading okay the media okay we have to be very critical about it now next is socially so um, this dimension has something to do with global social relations. So, for example, mobility, for example, tourism, and a sense of global community, right? So, right now, we have this uh, mindset that we're not only living in a country, we're living in an international community. And we've got the sense of being a world citizen rather than just a citizen of your country. Next up is political dimension of globalization so in the political dimension we've got here your supranational organization so when we say supranational organizations these are the supranational so meaning beyond national supra meaning beyond so beyond national so if we've got our own government so beyond that we've got supra governments or supra organizations one of which is united nations for example okay so you've got wto you've got the european union etc etc so these supra national governance um, serves as our world police for example or the regionalization agent for example or cosmopolitanism for example okay so all these things are political this has something to do with leadership this has something to do with um, subordination this has something to do with how you you keep peace um, among between and amongst countries and whatnot okay so Next up is 
economic, so the economic dimension of globalization, I'm oh, sorry, the economic dimension of globalization actually has something to do with our common discourse. Okay, and this is uh, now the our transactions like trading, uh, corporations, instant money transfers, instant money transaction worldwide, okay, um, the global businesses, the global um what are you, industries and even the not so good part like the global exploitation of labor so for example one pressing issue here in the philippines is that we are actually one of the richest source of outsourcing um labor and of outsourcing companies because they say they say they believe that the philippine labor is cheap which is kind of true so um there are exploitation of labor that's going on and um i think we should so we should do something about that but this is actually a big opportunity for us to see uh, like why these things are happening and what makes these things happen okay so globalization again makes these things possible it involves the good and the not so good things okay so these are the dimensions of globalization actually i just discussed it on an overview so there are so many uh, nitty gritties of it that we can see in our daily lives and we can witness ourselves so it's time for you to reflect silently like how these dimensions of globalization actually affect you personally professionally academically etc etc okay so yeah go ahead and silently reflect on that or even after watching this lecture at this point i would like us to ponder over what is common among these dimensions okay now what is common among these dimensions of globalization the answer is they all depend on global communication infrastructure i bet everybody would agree if i say that these dimensions would not be possible without global communication infrastructure because this actually makes everything possible let's go on to the impact of globalization on communication first impact of globalization on communication number one virtual interaction as i've already mentioned earlier we're not bounded by geographical locations anymore or time and space because we can actually interact virtually what we're doing right now is virtual interaction what we're doing in our synchronous sessions is virtual interaction and what you're doing um, on social media is virtual interaction so um, everything is really made possible by globalization and communication right number two cultural awareness again and again and again um, due to globalization and communication cultural diversities are actually much more highlighted and appreciated and um, this is making us more aware of who we're talking to what we're talking about and all the various um, contexts that there are Okay, in terms of communicating. Now, three time differences. Okay, of course, it has an impact on our time. It's actually one of the reasons why there are people who are working at night and there are people who are actually studying at night and um, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, other aspects. So a lot of other aspects. And if you can think of other aspects that you may want to share, um, please raise them okay, in our synchronous sessions. Okay, now, um, lastly, because I don't want to make this um, lecture very, very long. Um, lastly, we've got uses of social media by Richman. We all know that social media is one of the biggest tools and features of the 21st century communication and is one of the prime movers of globalization, right? We are becoming more and more of a global community because of the, the rise of social media that we have nowadays, okay? So according to Richman, there are um, seven uses of social media and these are communication, cost support, competitions, communication research, connection, client service, and community service. So um, just, uh, just very, very brief because I know that these are very, very easy to understand, okay? So communication, again, if you've got um, if you've got relatives abroad, for example, you can still communicate with them even when you are very, very, uh, if, even when you are miles apart, okay? Um, and other sort of things. Uh, you can also use this um, in school, 
okay communication to your classmates to your prof to the school itself okay next so cause support when you have an advocacy that you support when you are trying to put forward a cause when you're trying to um support an organization no competitions for example yung mga photo photo liking contest napakarami nagkalat right uh, for example you've got singing competitions online any online competition next is communication research so uh, we can also do surveys online we can also use social media as source of our data for research and for our papers for our study right connection uh, we can actually feel connected to everyone when we're online right that's why somehow psychologically we've become addicted to being online and to using social media because we think we feel that we can connect to the world and we are updated and we are on the trend and you know there's someone that can read our posts and that can you know connect to us and stuff like that okay client service uh just recently Greenwich launched the uh, the their bot for you to order yeah so that's one client service there's a lot of client service um pages for example on Facebook and um businesses actually go on Facebook to provide services to their clients etc etc especially in their in this time of pandemic right everybody goes online already okay and community service you can be of service to the community by using social media like for example uh, news outlets yung mga hindi fake news ha okay i don't want to exhaust all possible explanations and examples for this because this is going to be your activity for your synchronous for our synchronous session so let me stop uh, let me stop talking now all right so that will be all for this lecture I want to make it shorter um, and for you to be given more time to reflect. Okay, and eventually I'm going to hear your thoughts during our synchronous session. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. I hope you guys are still safe and well and sane. So again, um, I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.